Good afternoon, children. I must preface this by saying I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just a girl with a camera and a lot of books, but I have a lot of recommendations and a lot to say about them. This is my booktube debut, if you will. Anyway, I'm Dakota. I study literature and creative writing. That's the preface. That's the preface in all of its glory. Without further ado, here are the books that I would sell my soul to the devil himself to read for the first time again. These books for me are god tier. How should I start this? In no particular order, I have Picnic Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. This book is basically about some girls from an Australian boarding school that go on a picnic at their hanging rock and never return. It's a timeless mystery. The prose is written so beautifully, so eerily, so endearingly. There is just something about this book that is magic. I think also a huge aspect is the fact that it's Australian and knowing how unforgiving the environment can be and how nature can like quite literally just reclaim you. I am such a big fan of books that don't solve themselves, of books that leave open endings for you to solve for yourself, I guess. I understand that's a big hit or miss, but it's so beautiful, I cannot get enough of it. Everything is just described so magically. It's a magic book. Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Eugenides? 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 You decide. It is the story of sisters and their life with their strict parents in their suburban town. The title is very self-explanatory here. It is a very grim topic and it's very beautifully written to the point where it warrants such deep thoughts that I was thinking about this book for months after I finished reading it the initial time. This is Go Ask Alice by Anonymous and this is essentially about a young girl, a child. It's just her going down a very rough path with drugs and people and running away from home and it's a really brutally honest story and see the controversial part about this was for a long time it was published under anonymous and everyone thought it was this discovered journal uh, but it's christian propaganda but i think it was a nun or somebody that wrote this book um to scare children away from drugs and lifestyles of such so when you read this take it with a grain of salt I read it when I thought it was real, which made it a lot more profound for me, but I still really enjoy the realism of the plot. This Secret History by Donna Tartt. This one is my favourite book of all time. I can't say enough about it. it is my, I think I've based like 90% of my personality on this, which is horrible to say because everybody in the book is a terrible person. It's almost cult-like. It covers academic elitism, classism it's just very intense it's another mystery suspenseful thriller and it's just so beautifully written and i read somewhere that it took donata nine years to write this book and it shows a very cracked spine and books absolutely scribbled over and covered in tea stains means it's a good book uh we were liars by e lockhart it basically just covers an extended rich family and the drama that it entails. This is a book that you either love with every inch of your being or a book that you're greatly disappointed by due to the amount that it's hyped up. And I can see both sides. So I remember when I first read this, the first three quarters of the book I was really bored. I was so bored. I was waiting for it to end. But when it ended, that ending saves it. And I think that the way that I know it's a good book is because each time I've read it since, it still made me cry. The ending has still made me cry. If you've read this book, you'll know why that one scene. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which I'm sure I don't need to summarise, but a man creates a monster. My favourite thing about this book is the way that it instills empathy for the beast within the reader. We're more inclined to feel for the monster, to feel for the beast, rather than to feel for the man who created it. 
This was actually the first classic that I read from cover to cover and understood. Perhaps that's why I have a soft spot for it. Because generally when I read classics, whether it be for uni or just general enjoyment and curiosity, spark notes, baby. A Paradise Rot by Jenny Havel. I guess it is young adult fiction, but very intense themes. Feminism, queerness, just general bodily fluids and rot and decay. So it's very intense and I'm getting a lot of mixed reactions for choosing this book for my book club this month. It is very shocking and it's grotesqueness, but it's so beautiful. A lot of we, a lot of rotten apples. It's just like nothing I've ever read before. This was, I've read a lot of books and I feel like a lot of them slip under the same themes and categories, but this really stands out in its own category for me. I had more books, but I think I should save them for future videos because I don't want to give away all of my secrets as of yet. Please, before you consider buying these books, um, to look up the content warnings. There will be a consistent theme in my recommendations of very intense adult themes. Regardless, I would sell my soul to read these. All. Again. What qualifies a soul? What is a soul? Let's not get too existential on a booktube video. Perhaps another time. Uh, epilogue. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. I have a blog. I am a poet, if you would like to read it. I'll put the link in the bio. Um, I have an Instagram and a TikTok where I talk about books and poetry and things like that. Is it socially acceptable to wear uh, giant hoodies as formal clothing? I am in lockdown.